Shout out to Elam Al Sabin on Patreon for two years of support. Get weekly goods, tutorial files, mockups, templates, items from my store, and more, as well as supporting the free tutorials on my channel. Check out my Patreon in the description below. What's up, guys? Quezzy or Noah here, bringing you guys another tutorial. And today we're in Cinema 4D, and I'm going to be showing you how to create this fluid goop text. Now, this effect is inspired by this Badland magazine cover, the text here. Um, and it was actually sent to me by Flock of Seagull on Instagram, and we had a little conversation about how to create this effect uh, because they wanted to do it themselves and they actually created some pretty good renditions of it and I decided to give it my own personal go and that's where this tutorial comes from so hopefully you guys enjoy. Now this is the final version of it in Photoshop which the Photoshop and Cinema 4D files are both available to download on my Patreon page if you're a $5 tier member but I'll also include a free download for the Cinema 4D file for you guys right now. It just won't include my light studio and the material from my materials pack. If you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this but let's go over to Cinema 4D and get started. Alright so we're over into my light studio and I added a bit of a background to this because I think a background really looks good. Um, so you'll have this in the free download down below, but if you want to add your own, you can just simply add a plane and add it to the background and add some sort of material to it. Now, I also have Mo Text already set up here, so you want to go ahead and grab your own if you don't have it. So go to MoGraph Mo Text and go ahead and type in the text you want and pick the font you want. I'm going to be using the default text setup that's here, um, my name and the ACMO display font. Um, because we're not actually going to be using the Mo text, we're using this as a guide. So what we want to do is switch our views and go to this front view. And we want to go to the spline pen. Now you can also do this in Illustrator or Photoshop and export the paths to Cinema 4D. Uh, but if you don't have those programs, you can just do it in Cinema 4D like this. So basically you want to create a outline, or not really an outline, but you want to create a path of your text. So I'm going to just stay in the middle of each of these letters and create my text. So you can see I did the round bit of the Q and then I can get the move tool and move these to fix them a little bit. And there's other ways to do this by the way, but this is just the way I prefer. Um, and then let's come down and finish off the little Q right there. And we have the Q. Now you want to go ahead and do this for each letter and feel free to break the spline. You don't have to keep it intact, uh, intact all the time. So you can see I do most of the E, I break it off and then come back and finish off the middle part. And you want to do that for each letter. All right, so I've done that for each letter and we can come back to the Mo text and hide it. And you can see it's pretty janky. It doesn't have to be perfect though. And I'm just going to go ahead and start with one letter. Um, so I'm going to use the first two splines, which are the Q. And I'll take all the other splines and move them down for now. And we'll create the effect with these two first. So we want to go and get a sphere. And you want to knock down the radius to something like 15. Um, and of course you could adjust the size later on as well. And we want to go to the cloner next, add that, add the sphere to the cloner, um, select the cloner and set the mode to object and so, uh, make your object one of the splines. So we'll do the first one. And then on the cloner too, you can adjust some things. So um, I like to go to where it says distribution and count and do even. And you want these spheres to be touching for the most part. So you can up the count till they touch so that's pretty good. And then we can adjust these effects later as well. But let's go ahead and make sure our cloner is selected. Go to MoGraph, Effector, and Shader. And now with this shader, we want to go to Parameter. Set the scale to negative 1.5. Be sure to get your point in there. There we go. Um, and then check position and just kind of go with some random numbers here that are single digits. So I'll go minus 8, plus 9 minus seven. Um, and this will just offset these spheres ever so slightly. Um, and you won't notice that effect until uh, the next step. But let's go ahead and select the shader and cloner. I like to put them in a null. So I'm going to hold alt and press G and then copy and paste them. Open this up and let's click the cloner, select the second spline. There we go. And then on this cloner, we're going to bump down the count to like four since it's such a small spline. Actually, we can bump this down a little further. We'll do three. 
Um, and we have our two cloners here. So the next step is to add these to a volume builder. So we're gonna go to the volume builder and then also the volume mesher. And now uh, the volume builder and mesher are newer features to Cinema 4D. So if you don't have these, it's because your Cinema 4D is an older version. Um, but let's add the volume builder to the volume mesher and add each cloner to the volume builder. And let's go ahead and select the volume builder, set the voxel distance to two or the voxel size to two and add a smooth at the bottom here, which will add the smooth on top. And you wanna select the cloner, use mesh points, and then bump down the size to maybe five for each of these. So use mesh points and set this to five. Now you notice five is a little small, so we're gonna to have to start increasing it. So I'm gonna to go to the main one and just start bumping it up until we get that liquidy effect, which we kind of do there at 10. So let's do the same thing here. Cool, and now you'll notice we have our paint effect already, but it is looking a little bit wonky. So um, let's come to the shaders and we forgot one important step. So let's select both the shaders and go to shading, hit the drop down and add noise. Now click the noise and I like to do very minimal to this. I just went to contrast and bumped it up. So we have like bigger and smaller affected areas here. Um, you can come in and change the noise to whatever. So you can hit the little thumbnail and pick whatever ones you like. I left it at a normal noise. And if you want um, like less effect, you could increase the global scale to maybe 500. Um, but I thought, yeah, you get weird results like that. So I left mine at 100. Um, also, you can get a little bit of an animation going by setting the animation speed to one and loop period to like four. And then when you press play, this will just change, which is a pretty fun effect if you want to do some low animation stuff. Uh, but we're going to leave it as is. And you can see we're pretty good. Let's actually go back to the volume builder and maybe we, uh, and maybe we increase our mesh points again. So we'll bump that up. and bump this up. So I think that's pretty good. And also we can come into the splines at any point and move these around. So you can see this is the little bit of the queue. We could actually move this, move it further away to get a better looking effect. I kind of like that. Also, if you're getting like holes in your um, text, go to the cloner and go to offset and move this. Um, it should fill in any holes um, depending on how your thing is set up, but also be sure to make sure the distribution is even if you have that problem. You can see if we go to count, we get a lot of those. So let's keep it even. And basically after that, you just want to copy and paste that for all your letters. Um, so I'll do a quick speed run of that. Essentially, you're going to the cloner and picking a new spline after you copy and paste it. And you might have to make adjustments to the cloner. So this one you can see doesn't quite complete the E. So I'm gonna come in and bump up the count. For the H, I have three splines. So I had to duplicate a cloner. Just be sure when you do that to come in and drag the cloner below the smooth in the volume builder. And be sure to check the mesh points and set set it to the appropriate size. I was having a little bit of trouble with the middle of this H, so I just came down and bumped down the radius of the mesh points to make it a little thinner. All right, so we have it all set up. Uh, you'll notice some of these are pretty thick, like the Z is pretty thick and the main part of the E. Um, so you could come into those ones and knock down the amount of um, or the count of the cloners. So maybe we go to like 25 here or something um, and play around with the different settings that we went through in the tutorial. Um, I'm going to keep moving on though and show you guys the material I used. So I'm actually in my materials pack V8 and I'm going to grab this paint material and I have several different versions of this. Um, actually, maybe we try a new one. Let's go for this more colorful one. Uh, paint five and let's go back to our objects and we'll open up this material because we have to make a few modifications so on the color we have this layer 
So we're gonna copy that shader, go to our normal and paste it there. Open that up and then go to shader, effects, normalizer. Then we're gonna go to our reflectance and we're gonna add a reflection legacy. Paste it again, open it up, add an effect and a hue and saturation, knock the saturation all the way down, pop out and set it to about 20%. And I think we should be good. I'm gonna move this off to the side and I'm just gonna add it to the whole null. And you can see it looks pretty wonky here. If I render this region um, with the UVW mapping, um, I think it looks pretty good, but I liked a different look. So what we're gonna do is click that material, come to projection, um, do flat, and come to this little icon here, click that, and let's move this box to cover our material. Or cover our letter, rather. And there we go. And then we can press Command and just drag this to all five of our nulls for each letter. And we can adjust them accordingly. So I'm going to bring this E over and maybe I go to the rotation option and rotate that material. And then let's do something similar with the H. I'm happy with how the Z looks, so I'm going to go right to the Y. And I'm going to set this up so there's very little orange on this one. So something like that. We could also scale this too. We don't have to just use the move and rotate. Uh, but there we go. And now um, I, I made the purple background for the original material. So purple background might look a little weird in this case. But let's give it a test render and you can kind of see what we're working with. Now my shadows are a little extreme on this, but you can see the effect we're getting. Um, I'm not getting a lot of that reflection, so maybe we come in and pump this back up and let's see what that is looking like. Um, but for the most part, that is the tutorial, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this little effect, but I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to my channel for more. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Quezzy and That's Quezzy. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.